I'm now in the exam room with Dr. Shelley Rubin. I want to microchip my cat because it's the right thing to do for all sorts of reasons. I have an indoor cat. I live on the fifth floor. Odds are nothing's going to happen, but you know what? I take my cat out sometimes on a leash and harness. And still, you never know. What if an emergency happens and no human being is home and they evacuate the pets? It really has happened. A good idea to microchip even indoor only cats. Well, you know, if you uh, cat owners all know that there's always that chance that they can escape when that door opens up. And it doesn't make any difference where you live, you know. Uh, once a cat gets out, if you live on the first floor and it gets out to the outside, or you live on the 40th floor and it gets out in the hallway and maybe gets in the elevator and goes down, you know, you, know, you never know. Presses the button, right. you don't know. If, if you have a permanent identification on them, and, and frankly, most people don't have collars on their, on their cats all the time inside, when they're inside cats, uh, but if you have permanent identification on them, um, if that cat is found by somebody and taken to a veterinarian or a shelter, um, it can be scanned and we can identify exactly who owns that cat and, you, and you'll get your cat back. Just talked to a rescuer working Hurricane Gustav, and before that, same rescuer working the Midwest floods. And she said, so few cats. Lots of cats were found. That's the good news. But who do they belong to? Because so few were microchipped. And right. she said, the chances of, uh, of us reuniting people with cats, pretty minimal. Right. And, and that's very true of cats particularly, because you know the number of cats that go to veterinarians, too, are down compared to dogs. So we see a lot of dogs. But the, but the good thing is that most shelters in the United States microchip before they adopt their animals. So there's a good possibility if you adopted your cat, it may have been microchipped already. Which is important to know. Right. Right. All right, let's see what microchipping is all about. Okay, well, you know, microchipping really is, is, the, is a process of injecting a very small microchip um, over the shoulder blades here. What is the microchip under the itself? Skin. What does it, it looks look like, like a piece of rice. And uh, basically, that's where it stays for the whole life of the animal, right here. And when we scan an animal, if somebody brings in a lost animal and we scan it, we'll scan the whole body. But most of the time, this is the area where the microchip should be. And then that microchip will transpond a, a unique number. And that number is registered in a database that belongs to you, Steve. Okay. And so. If anything ever happens to Roxy, you'll get her back. Okay. okay. I, 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 so you want to go through the process? So. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Let's here we do go. it. So we take off the top of the syringe here, and I'm going to stand over here. We're going to slide her down just a little bit, if that's okay, so I can get a good, good chance to do this. We just pick up the skin. We'll scratch your ears real hard and fast, and inject it in, and that's all there is to it. It's all done. Now, how important is it that I register? Well, it is very important. and Registration actually is very, very simple to do. Um, there's a form that comes with the microchip. Uh, we require the, um, uh, just fill it out, send a check in. Uh, cat is entered into a database. Uh, anybody that finds the cat or sees this number calls the 1-800 number or 188 number, and um, they, can, they can therefore match the microchip to the owner. Well, Roxy may not be jumping up for joy now, but I'll tell you, if she ever gets lost, I'll be jumping up for joy because they'll know who she belongs to, and that's a good thing. I said I practice what I preach, and it's about time I did it. I microchipped my cat, and I'm happy I did.